Welcome. This video is going to be about a condition that I hope most of you never encounter, and that's called postprandial hypoglycemia, which is the medical term for recurring low blood sugar. And this is something that may happen after gastric bypass in the long run after surgery. My name is John Pilcher. I'm a bariatric surgeon in San Antonio. I've been in practice since 1995, and I've seen this condition, postprandial hypoglycemia, on a number of occasions, although uh, I would say that it shows up in just a fraction of 1% of all gastric bypass patients who are out there. Now, postprandial hypoglycemia is kind of like the big brother of dumping syndrome. If you've watched my dumping syndrome video, you'll know that dumping syndrome has a couple different phases, and one phase is that the blood sugar spikes up and then crashes down. Uh, most people notice dumping syndrome right away and stop that. Many patients have dumping syndrome. Only a very few people have lasting postprandial hypoglycemia. And this um, recurring low blood sugar phenomenon can be very serious, and it's very frustrating because most of the medical community does not understand how to treat it and very often the uh, interventions that are accomplished by most of the medical community especially on the endocrinology side may make the situation worse so let me explain now as I mentioned this is all about low blood sugar and it's something that shows up on a recurring basis in just a very few patients after gastric bypass it can show up in two main ways uh, the most significant way it can show up is with an active low blood sugar that happens after eating and so the low blood sugar symptoms would be heart racing uh, feeling of anxiety maybe feeling sweating maybe decreased mental status so a person can feel just kind of fuzzy or weak or disoriented um, you may be checking your blood sugar and you may see your blood sugar go down from the 60s to the 50s and sometimes even into the 40s and this is really a serious condition uh, there's a lesser version of this scenario which some more of you may recognize and this is where you have hunger and cravings between meals and you feel like you need to snack all the time that probably is being caused by an intermittent low blood sugar and one key principle I want to teach you before I go into the details on this scenario is that Lack of food typically does not cause a low blood sugar, as you might think, but instead the wrong types of food or other derangements in your metabolism cause the blood sugar to spike up and then to crash down. I'm going to talk about that in more detail. Now I'm going to talk about three main causes for this postprandial hypoglycemia and then one-fourth topic, which I'm going to mention just to set aside. Uh, the number one cause for postprandial hypoglycemia is taking in carbs or sugars. That's number one. Number two, chemicals, which I'll expand on in a moment. Number three, vitamin deficiency. And I've seen all three of those. Happily, they all are three correctable without surgery and without anything major being done. And then the fourth topic, which I'm going to set aside, is a condition called nesidioblastosis. And nesidioblastosis is kind of a complicated situation where certain insulin producing cells in the pancreas overgrow throughout the pancreas. This is something that's been found in research projects out of the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. And um, it's something that I'm setting aside because I haven't ever actually seen it, although I've looked for it in many patients, and it leads to a very severe surgical therapy, which I'll come back to in a little bit. First, unpacking carbohydrates as the most common and the most serious cause of postprandial hypoglycemia. What happens in a gastric bypass is that simple carbs like rice or potatoes or pasta, sugar, fruits, um, the sugars in these foods are absorbed very rapidly from the small intestine because remember it's a tiny little stomach pouch which doesn't really hold on to food. So uh, the food that you consume, including carbs, enters the small intestine very quickly. Um, carbs require very little pre-digestion for absorption and so these carbs get absorbed very rapidly. The total dose of the carbs is usually not very large, but it hits the bloodstream very quickly, and it's enough to make the blood sugar, the blood sugar, spike up. Now, because the total dose of carbs is usually not huge, and again, we're talking about a small gastric bypass stomach, that blood sugar is going to tend to fall pretty soon as those carbs are depleted and as they're metabolized. But the spike in the blood sugar lasts long enough for the pancreas to get kind of fired up or activated and appropriately start to make lots of insulin to try to bring that blood sugar down from its abnormal elevated level. And so just about at the time when the blood sugar was going to trend down anyway, because the sugars are depleted, that's when the insulin kicks in and it slams the blood sugar down to a lower level. So this is how we can understand that um, 
intake of carbs lets the blood sugar, causes the blood sugar, first of all, to spike, and it's actually the spike that causes the low 20 or 30, 40 minutes after one eats. And so taking in carbs, again, is the number one and the most significant cause of postprandial hypoglycemia. Now, there are several things that happen medically that also predispose to this. Um, first of all, there's the environment. Um, carbs are all over the place, and most Americans have um, half or two-thirds of their typical meal be carbs. And so if patients aren't conscious about their eating and fairly vigilant, then they will gradually slide back into eating some carbs over time. And um, what will happen is that uh, if they ever did have dumping syndrome, they will um, the body will adapt or accommodate to the carb intake, and they will not have the cramping, nausea, diarrhea part of dumping syndrome and they'll say to themselves, well, the carbs must not be that bad or, you know, they taste so good and I'm not having dumping syndrome so the carbs must actually kind of be okay. Wrong. Carbs are always going to be a problem for your metabolism because you've had this obesity condition and because you have a gastric bypass. And so uh, people not being bad, but just being unconscious, slide back into eating carbs gradually over time and those carbs create these cycles of um, blood sugar up and blood sugar down. And the blood sugar down may feel awful, that's full-blown postprandial hypoglycemia, or it may be a mild blood sugar drop that just leads to a sense of, man, I need some food right now. And if, you're, if you need food because your blood sugar is low, that's not a healthy response to food. That's not a nutritional need for food. That's a hypoglycemia need for food. And what's your body going to want? It's going to want more sugar. So you're going to be in the cycle of back up with your blood sugar and then back down again because you had carbs or you had sugar or juice or something like that. So I call this the carb roller coaster and it's a terrible ride to get onto. So cutting out carbs is another key thing. Now, even medical advice sometimes leads to increased carbohydrate intake and uh, this especially shows up in endocrinology practices. It has been enshrined in medical lore that there are certain essential carbohydrates and this is based on, I really have to say it, based on an erroneous interpretation of some old surgical research strike that old medical research from the 1970s um, where the body does need to burn glucose for the brain it does need to burn glucose for the kidneys um, and that led to the idea that people need to have carbohydrate intake on a regular basis but that is absolutely not correct the body has an ample ability to convert other energy sources to the needed sugar for the brain and for the kidney and this is how human beings going back to caveman days could go for days in fasting there is not a need for ongoing calorie intake and there is not any medical need for carbohydrates at any point. They taste good, I grant you. Um, but many patients who have blood sugar uh, spikes and crashes will naturally enough go see their endocrinology doctor. And um, we're working through this as a medical community, but very often at the endocrine office they will receive the enshrined advice which is going to involve a balanced diet of some protein, some fats, and some carbs. Um, and they will be told to eat carbs, which is literally the wrong thing to do as a gastric bypass patient. I'm going to come back to how to treat this problem in just a moment. Moving on to situation number two, the chemicals. How do chemicals cause postprandial hypoglycemia? Well, mostly when I say chemicals, I'm talking about artificial sweeteners. And artificial sweeteners, as far as we understand it, can uh, stimulate low blood sugar in at least three ways. Um, some of the artificial sweeteners are direct stimulants to insulin secretion. And so when there's excess insulin in the body, the insulin will push the blood sugar down. That's one set of artificial sweeteners. Another set of artificial sweeteners stimulates appetite, and it stimulates appetite for, guess what, for carbs. And so if you have a craving for carbs, you're going to eat some carbs, and then yes, your blood sugar goes up and it crashes down. And so that's coming from artificial sweeteners. And then the third, the tricky thing that artificial sweeteners do in some cases is that the artificial sweeteners disrupt the normal colon bacterial balance. And why does that even matter for blood sugar? Well, here's the deal. We take in these artificial sweeteners that are labeled as zero calories because we humans don't absorb them, but they are not too different from sugar in, in their chemical makeup, and so there always are bacteria living inside this that can use these chemicals as fuel. And um, since these chemicals are reaching the colon where the bacteria naturally live, um, in an unchanged state, they're ready to serve as fuel for these usually um, 
illness creating or what we call pathogenic bacteria and uh, these bacteria go crazy they start to overgrow and it creates a significant imbalance in the natural colon uh, bacterial colonies in the colon and those bacteria then the ones that are harmful or what we call pathogenic will secrete hormones that are then absorbed into our bloodstream and create bad effects or toxic metabolites or toxic byproducts that can also have bad effects in our body that relate to our blood sugar. So just to summarize again, chemicals, and I mean mostly artificial sweeteners but also preservatives, can cause the blood sugar to go up because of, um, sorry, can cause it to go up because of colon bacterial effects and because of appetite stimulation and they can both of those will cause it to go back down cause the blood sugar to go back down and then they can cause it to go down directly by stimulating insulin secretion which of course suppresses blood sugar levels okay the third significant and real cause of low blood sugar that I see in my practice is lack of taking vitamins. And so a number of different vitamin deficiencies can cause people to be excessively sensitive to normal food intake. And so they can be a person who's eating normal healthy foods, um, but yet they have low blood sugars from time to time. And these are most often patients who have not come to see us for a number of years, who have not had their vitamin levels checked and we find that when we get these people back on vitamins along with correcting the food plan getting in exercise etc that um, very often their blood sugars will correct and will become more balanced and more stable uh, and again I mentioned this condition nesidioblastosis that's been found in research patients uh, mostly in Minnesota with the Mayo Clinic um, out of Rochester and um, again having looked at it in many patients I've not seen that in any patients and so I'm going to set that aside as a uh, cause that shows up regularly in this very small subset of gastric bypass patients. Talking about how the postprandial hypoglycemia happens leads naturally into a conversation about what to do when it happens. Uh, and the first thing to do, of course, is to get connected with your bariatric surgical team. Or maybe this happens to you five or ten years after your gastric bypass, you're not living in the same place anymore. And in that case, I definitely would recommend connecting with a new bariatric team who will be happy to help. Um, in those bariatric visits, the first thing that you need is you need a detailed diet review with your bariatric dietitian, and I'm saying bariatric dietitian, not your endocrine dietitian, because your bariatric dietitian is going to have a different understanding about the right foods for you as a gastric bypass patient. Second thing is that you need to connect with the team members who are going to check your blood work, who are going to make sure that you're on the right vitamins. In the vast majority of cases, correcting the food plan away from carbs and away from chemicals, getting on to vitamins, checking the labs, and establishing long-term follow-up is going to take care of the problem. In just a few cases, it might be appropriate to do something that I call a colon clean-out, which is basically doing a colon flush and getting on some probiotics to help the colon get back into balance. There is a medicine called acarbose, which blocks the absorption of carbs, and this is mainly useful if you can't avoid carbs for some reason, so it's really smarter not to eat carbs, um, but um, you know there may be some behavioral issues, and acarbose could be useful in those circumstances. Um, and then in very, very, very rare circumstances, it can be appropriate to undo the gastric bypass. Uh, I myself have done that on two separate occasions for people who um, really seem to be doing all the right things and still were running a low blood sugar intermittently after the gastric bypass, uh, both of those got completely better. One more mention on this condition called nesidioblastosis. Uh, if you believe nesidioblastosis is the problem, then the right thing to do is to do a subtotal resection of the pancreas. That is a really big operation with a lot of complications and a lot of long-term side effects. Um, and, and that's what's advocated by some surgeons out of the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. And I just... Um, have not seen that useful in our patient population. Again, in these very rare cases, undoing the gastric bypass has been successful in taking care of the hypoglycemia. So, in summary, this is a rare condition, but a serious condition. It's the kind of thing that can be treated almost always with behavioral and habit change and some vitamins. Um, and if not, then there is a surgical solution to take care of it. Stay well.